800 hours to get this to start. Well, hi guys. So when Robbie was out of town with Hillbilly and Colton, I got on Facebook Marketplace and I decided to make my own Facebook Marketplace mistake. I was searching for just cool stuff and I almost lost hope. I'll just tell you, I found a mint condition car. Between probably one owner, maybe two, I don't know, but I sent Steve and Grandpa down to get that car and then I was just waiting for Robbie to get back. It doesn't run and drive yet, so we need to see if we can get it to run and drive and then I think we're gonna paint it. I'm just adding more projects to the projects that we already have. So this is the only tire that's flat, so we're gonna see the whole there. So before we pull it inside, we wanna get all this white, wet stuff off. <laughs> Do you need some help? Feels like there's a brake dragon. What have you done? I made a good decision. What is this thing? It's beautiful. <laughs> Do you guys see this? This is the prettiest thing I've seen in so long. So we took off, went and had our fun at King of the Hammers, and I come home to this. I don't know how much she paid, nor do I care. All I care about is that she makes really terrible marketplace decisions too, or even. But not as bad as yours. <laughs> Mine usually run. Yeah, with a motor in it. This is like the Wayne's World car. Oh, there. Can you imagine it right now? Blue with little scallop flames. Me and Garth could party on. <laughs> Welcome to the 1976 AMC Pacer Show, where we show you how to make this baby run. And there's snow outside, so if we can get this thing to run and drive, we can go out and do some. <laughs> We're gonna get this thing to run and, or well, we're gonna try to get it to run and drive. Look at that. Whoa, core support. So we can put a radiator in it. Got an upper mount. That's gotta cost, that's gotta be hard to find. These seats are mint. <laughs> in good condition. They're mint? Yeah, they're mint. You like it? Yes. You gonna take it for a drive? Yes. Woo! Look at how big these doors are. They're huge. Literally, they're the biggest doors on the face of the <laughs> oh, store. Like, they are so big. This is retro. Look at that handle. I think this needs a paint job. We'll just leave Lincoln inside the crib. Look, we got spare wheels. Is this open? I mean, the struts don't stay up, but I'll bet we can go get new ones. There's nothing wrong with this. Okay. It's a little bit sun faded. Where'd you find this at? Vegas. How'd you get it here? I hired someone. <laughs> <laughs> Who paid for the tow truck to go and pick this up? I did. You did. She sent Steve, our tow truck driver, to Vegas to pick up an AMC Pacer. Can you believe it, Lincoln? I am so proud too. We'll go ahead and get this hood off. I'm gonna have to have my camera boy help me here in a second. Look at that cameraman. Really can. Using my head. We gotta figure out how this grill comes off. That grill moves with fast. the hood. Come push this down. Okay, let it off. We'll just leave it for now. Okay, so the condenser is absolute garbage. We do have a radiator that we were gonna use on the Bronx Star. We'll use that on this, but this is a straight six. I can't even believe there's six cylinders. Do you know what'll fit in the place of a six cylinder straight six? An eight cylinder LS. Ooh, twin turbos, pew, pew, hair dryers. <sighs> All right, so we just noticed Somebody's robbed the radiator out of this. The transmission cooler lines are just dangling here. So we're for sure gonna have to loop those. We're gonna get the AC condenser out of here. I think we're gonna go get a new starter solenoid. All right, so I'm gonna undo these AC lines, try to get the AC condenser out of, out of our way. I mean, we'll probably never use th these AC lines again, but you never know. Oh, we should, before we undo the carburetor or anything, we should check it, see if it'll start. So we're gonna see if this thing will fire up just for fun. 
my guess is it probably won't start. Or if we can straighten this back out. Dude, perfect. Looks like somebody's hit this. This front end's been wrecked. Our pacer's wrecked. No. Do you know any guy, anybody guys? I got a buddy. It? No, I don't, but I've got a buddy in Heber City that derbies these AMC pacers. We might have to pay him a visit for some front end stuff. So we just got this new Milwaukee quarter inch impact out of the box and I'm liking this thing. We're making some temporary, uh, will you drill this out? Just a little bit too, too small. This is my temporary terminal. And we got our jumper to the coil. All right, Hillbilly's gonna turn the key, see if it'll do anything. You don't have a connection somewhere. Crank it. Given 12 and a half volts there. Starter's getting volts, Okay, go. Yeah, 12.5. Is our starter bad? 12.5. So we're getting 12 and a half volts. So let's grab our jack, put this puppy on its side. Um, we're gonna see what's going on with the starter. Yeah, we might have to tap tappy. I'm super excited that Demery, the boss, makes very, very irrational decisions okay. while we're gone. I like her even more. So raise it to the moon? Yeah, all the way. And one wheel on it. This thing rear wheel drive. Yeah. The cool thing about this car, I'm noticing, is it's rust free. Look at those rockers, solid as can be. Look at that, it's been reinforced. They're planning on rallying this puppy. You have power? Go. No. We're kind of thinking that the ground's the problem. We're not getting a good connection. So I'm gonna hurry and wire wheel it and get it all cleaned up so it's nice and shiny. And that way we now have good connection. So I took the battery cable off of the starter to make sure that we're getting 12 and a half volts, which we are. Hillbilly made sure we got good ground connection. Now I'm gonna test it again and just make sure that when he turns the key, the solenoid is sending power down here to the starter. And if that's the case, and it still doesn't turn, I'm gonna beat it with a hammer. Crank it. Oh, oh. Hello, mama. <laughs> Woo! We almost in business. Um, do we have starting fluid? Yeah. All right, crank it. Well, crank it again. Hold it. Does it have gas in it? No, of course not. Ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> We're gonna check for a spark. We're gonna use a sparkulator. Keep your hands off of that. Ready? No, don't be a jerk. I hate being shocked. Mitch knows that he's still alive. Oh, he knows. <laughs> I know I'm alive. <laughs> I promise you I am. Okay, crank it. <laughs> We're not getting any spark. We'll be right back after these messages, folks. Okay, so I think what's going on is the ignition is a box about that big that there's a rod that goes in there and it, when you turn the key, it pushes down slider down and it starts to separate a little bit. And when it does that, it won't have no spark, no power, no nothing until you push it back down. Cause as soon as I release off the key a little bit, we get spark. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this broken wire and see if that might be it. And they have come apart. They come up here into the control module. So I'm just gonna reconnect them real quick and see. Beep, 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 beep. So I'm gonna strip that down. Let's undo the battery cable. We'll get these connected here and we'll see what it does. But I wanna see where my wiring goes. It goes in there somewhere. What's that sound for? Come here and I'll show you. Found the very first brand specific logo right here. Ford. So it's a Ford plug. Makes sense why it fell. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna see if this helped at all. Okay, go. <laughs> what up? There's supposed to be power to the coil. Let me turn the key on. Yeah, there's cool. There's power. So this don't have the <clears throat> ignition slider like I was thinking. So I don't think that's the problem. I think it's wire gremlin somewhere. It's in the gremlin, the pacer. It's a wire wire pacer, pacer somewhere. Try that. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna pull all these wires out. We're gonna change the cap and rotor, change the spark plugs, just start changing stuff. Hope for the best. You can see the contact points inside the cap where the rotor been hitting suck. Yeah, see, look, that's all bad. It's like all arced out. So we got the new cap, Let's put the new cap on, we'll put the new rotor, we'll put some new plug wires, put the new plugs. 
it comes off in chunks. So I got these fancy pliers, if you notice they're looped, they're designed to take spark plug wires off so you're not breaking, ripping the wire out of the metal contact or if the boots get stuck like they are now. What the heck, come on. I think we should pull the spark plugs and do a compression test on each cylinder. Okay, I'll go on Google real fast to see what the compression is supposed to be on your cylinder so we know where to start at. And did you notice a big difference in power? It's hard to say because it. I noticed a different, I didn't test drive it after I... So does it actually have power now? We're talking about Hillbilly's Bronx Star. Um, while we were out at King of the Hammers, she had a little pop, pop, pop problem. And like no power. No power whatsoever. Still had more power than he's used to with the 2.9 but we had two spark plug wires crossed because there's a high output firing order and there's a normal 5.0 firing order and he had it on the high output and that is a non-high output engine. It idled high. pretty good for having spark yeah, plug she wires idled. crossed. She idled real good. <laughs> for having spark plug wires crossed, so I would say way good. I idle real good when my spark plug wires are messed up too. So hey, Billy's gonna get this all blown off, vacuumed up, pull the spark plugs. <laughs> You think we're gonna get this running today? Yep. Yes. We have so much faith. <laughs> <laughs> I think they both like it more than I do. I don't like it, I love it. Exactly. I love piles of crap. I'm gonna grab one so them all out. If that Dizio right there, if, it's mm -hmm. mag if that Dizio gets magnetized anyway, it will cause issues. So don't put a magnet on it. Well, just with the heat and stuff and spinning over time, they will oh. hey, Split fire. It's like a little snag. A filly little nag. Oh, performance plugs. <laughs> One does not like the other. Okay, now don't magnetize that. We're gonna check our first cylinder. Cranky, cranky. <laughs> Heck yeah! Almost 130. Go again. Whoa, something just arc. It's right. Because that arc might be our problem. It was like right here. Jump. Well, I just want to point out the fact that we are at, we're at 145 PSI on that cylinder. That's okay. what I say. I don't think compression is low on that one. Bad the bone on that. We got to find out where that spark came from. I'm going to work on getting all the spark plugs out. That way we can check all the cylinders. We might be wasting our time, but you know what? At least they'll have fresh spark plugs, fresh cap, fresh rotor. Equals. Fresh burnout. Yeah. Um, this thing better burn out. I don't know where this, why, it got, why we're getting spark right there because there's no wiring in, up there at all. Behind it, nothing. All right, so now we're checking this number two cylinder. We already checked number three. We're going to move forward and then we're going to go back because that's why. <laughs> 135. Sounds good. It's the coil that's arcing. Yeah, it should arc when it cranks and it's not... I'm wondering if it needs a ground, or uh, a uh, chassis ground. Oh yeah, probably. Hillbilly's got a good point. He's gonna work on a chassis ground. We only have an engine ground. I'm gonna remove this bolt here. I'll go get some scotch Bright, kind of scuff, uh, get rid of the paint right there. So that way we have a good chassis ground. The motor's grounded, but the motor and transmission is sitting on rubber mounts and power don't travel through rubber. But before you do that, let's check this other cylinder. <laughs> 135. Cool. That was good. So we got three good cylinders. Halfway there. All right, cylinder number five. That's good. Another 135. All right, very back cylinder. Hit it. 135. All right, the front cylinder and the blast cylinder, we got to test. Let's hit it. This one's only got 50. All right, so we have one low compression cylinder. It's the very front one. It's got 50 PSI. The rest have 135 to 145, so we'll just compensate. We'll just even it all out, and it'll work just fine. So we're gonna get all the wire, or all the spark plugs, wires, cap, rotor, all that stuff put back in and see if we can get this thing to fire at all. I'm gonna pull the coil out. I think change. we should take the ground wire just to see if it's getting any kind of... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Coffee. Is it supposed to? Yes, that's where that it gets means that. this from. So either it's dirty and not getting connection, or that's dirty and not getting connection, or that coil is just bad. So we'll get this changed out real quick, and that's had so much buildup. Oh, Lincoln says your shoes are dirty. My shoes are dirty? Yeah. But yours are clean. My shoes are 
All right, so we're gonna put the positive on this side, negative on that side. Looks pretty old. Lincoln's doing laps around the car. So see, it's already a good deal having this thing around. It's keeping him active. Okay. Lincoln's on the run. I think Lincoln's going crazy. I'm gonna get all my spark plugs out, get them gapped or just check the gap. We'll get them screwed in, get our wires on. We've got our cap and rotor put on. Um, we've got to do our ignition module also. 35, 35. So it's in between 33 and 37. What that is, is the gap between your spark plug electrode and the top is 37 thousandths. So this is 35. They're all coming in at 35, which is correct. It's exactly in the middle. Last one. All right, now that I've got all the spark plug wires, cap, rotor, coil done, we're gonna change the ignition module. I don't have the keys. Do you need the keys? Yeah. Say, my name's Garth. Say, party on, Wayne. Yeah. What? I don't have the keys. I don't think you need the keys. See, we're just changing this out preventatively, and we're gonna hope it gets spark. It's a little corroded, but plugs in. Let's cranky crank and see what it does. It don't seem like it's getting anything. Take the plug off the coil wire. Okay, hold on. Why would we have no spark? What is not power enough? Okay, so I'm gonna change these wires that go to the coil, change the connector of these wires that go to the coil. Because the style that it is, is it just a slide on and it looks very dirty and corroded in there. And we're just gonna put a butt connector on it to where we can bolt it to the top of the coil and hope that fixes it. Because right now we're just playing process of elimination of why we're not getting spark. We're not winning on that part. Crimping the last one. Make sure, pull it, make sure it's connected. Time to hook it up and see what it does. To see if it's a faulty coil or not, is you take the wire, the, a test light, ground it to the chassis somewhere, take the probe side and put it on the ground of the coil and crank. If it stays on, it means you have a bad ground somewhere. If it don't come on, it means the coil's bad. Okay, now we got power here on the negative side. Why is that? Are we supposed to have power through the negative? Not that I know of. <laughs> that green's coming up here. It's got a tiny bit of power. Well, this box is way, way hot. I wonder if we can clean in here. I don't know, can't remember if both these wires were cut or just one of them. So to make life easy, I'm just putting spade butt connector or spade connectors on it. So if one way don't work, we can unplug it, plug it back any other way. So we just found another wiring harness that is identical to that one. We don't know what the heck it does. Well, I don't think it would go to this. It's the exact same. Yeah, but look, these are the distributor wires and they go into this plug. Let's open this loom, see where they go. Well, look, they go right there. That's the ones, that's that's that other one. Hook that sucker up to that ground. Oh, that's hot. Why are we getting hot? Undo that. Okay, so that's not on now, so let's crank it and see if it pulsates before we go and change other things around. Those two wires. And that's it. Okay, so I'm plug. Reminds the sugar to get rid of that. We'll get hot. Do you think that's getting hot since we switched those? No, because that won't have no power going to it until this harness that we've been that we first started using that was already hooked up is missing wires that we need. The factory one has those wires that we need. So we're going to hook those wires up and hope for the best. Let's hope this works. You want me to crank it? Crank it. Crank it, crank it. <laughs> Still nothing. The negative should be orange off the box. Try it real quick. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. There's no power to this now. There's your power right there. You've got it going to the distributor wire. Okay, just crank no. it. <laughs> the white wire goes to the positive of the ignition oh, let me, plus with the, uh, let me, the red wire. Let me look at this real quick. So far, we're striking out, trying to figure out the wiring. We don't know what the heck is going on. Can we just look at the positive here? The doors open uh -oh. and close, okay? The doors open and close really, really well. <laughs> Might not start. <laughs> but we can open the doors. <laughs> All right, so I forgot that I've got this old Mel Jeep. So we're gonna see if it's got a straight six. And it does. <laughs> this might have the distributor that we need. Hello. All right, so my Mel Jeep over here at the property 
has a straight six okay. that's got a points distributor in it. Let's pull it out. Let's pull the ballast resistor and the coil, and let's just put this puppy into our pacer and let's make it work. Okay. Crossing my fingers that this is going to work, but I think it will. So Hillbilly went and grabbed the other distributor out of that Jeep. Just temporary. We're going to do an HEI distributor in this, but we can't get it tonight. The problem, child. Please be the same. <laughs> It's the same. Yes. So this is an electronic style. This is a points style distributor. And we can't figure out the electronic style. Revert to points yeah. style. We're going backwards and then we're going forward. So we're going back to points. Then I'm gonna order an HEI distributor and then we're gonna put an HEI in it. But the goal is to start this bad girl tonight. <laughs> okay, we're a little bit off. So it goes in, it does what we want it to do. I'm gonna take it back out. Hold on. Or pull it out and uh, turn the oil pump a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The oil yeah, pump yeah, yeah. itself. Let's grab a flathead. We're going to move the oil pump. That's right where we want it. I'm going to get that down in. All I needed was some food. Turn that over. <laughs> Later. Pretty sure we're way out of time now. Come on. Just see what it does. See if it'll pop. Oh yeah, she's way out of time now, stop. So now that we know that we got spark, we're going to bring it up to top dead center. Now we could be 180 off. There's okay. top dead center. We're top dead center. Now, what that means is our number one cylinder is all the way at the top. Now you have your exhaust stroke and you have your intake stroke. So we could be top dead center of our exhaust or our intake. Look how cool that is. Yeah, why'd you use this? So I could see? It's called the scope. It looked black. Yeah, because the piston was there. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Going in, the, there's, the, there's the piston. Two, three, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And the firing order is one, five, three, six, two, four. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> and I'm gonna line the distributor up right here with number one. Boom! We're gonna call that number one. And then I'm gonna put all the spark plug wires back on it. Now there is a chance that we're 180 off. It could be 180 degrees off on timing because we're either on the exhaust stroke or the intake stroke. So number one is going right here. Hey, lights work. Heck yeah. Ooh. <laughs> At least the headlights work. Crank it. Oh, 180 out. We need to put it back where it was. We need to spin it and then I'll move the distributor again. We're gonna hurry and pull it out, reset it, and it should be right on, but it is firing. You know it's got a cigarette lighter? Does it work? Nope, doesn't work. Got an AC, doesn't work. Heater. Doesn't work. But the lights work. Yeah, the lights oh, work. Hey, I feel like this is more high tech than Sequoia. <laughs> and look at all this leg room for the passenger. All right, so we're having Hillbilly put it on top dead center right on the timing mark again. We've got the distributor right pointed back at the number one position that I set it. So Hillbilly is actually gonna turn the engine 180 degrees back to the timing mark. And that's gonna take one full revolution of the cylinder going down and back up to the top. And I'm gonna pull the distributor out, clock at 180, shove it back in. And in theory, this should start. Now I know what you guys are gonna say. Why don't you just pull the distributor out and just spin at 180? Yes, that works. But how am I gonna be able to show you how to do this? All right, that's a little, that's one tooth off. I'm gonna tighten this up. Spark plug wires back on. Oh, oh. yep, go. Why would it fire and then not fire? Off the starter. Get off the starter. Don't let go of the key. Like once it runs, you can let the key go. Stop running. It's okay. She's it's not fine. okay. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I didn't do that. Give it some throttle and then you do that. This is going to be a team effort. Okay, go. I think the transmission might be. It's wanting to go into reverse. <laughs> Open that door. <laughs> then maybe someone else should be in here. No, you're fine. Just shut it off if you're gonna go through the fence. Shut the door just in case yeah, you don't you take better. the door off. <laughs> you better shut the door. <laughs> okay. Take it to go. Oh, 
Okay. Oh. That went over my foot. <laughs> <laughs> the brake doesn't work! Oh, I told you it all worked! Okay. It's getting I'm going! Put somebody else in here! <laughs> put it in neutral! <laughs> we found out the pacer is permanently locked into reverse. But it runs! <laughs> I can't believe you- I put it in drive? I can't believe you risked your life for the pacer. My foot got ran over! I was close, close. What? Woo! Fire! Oh, yeah. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay. Good news. Did the brakes work? I pushed them and it went. Dude, it, it sounds it good. Sounds so good. 800 hours to get this to start. So I'm going to go ahead and just place a disclaimer right now. This is not recommended. Gas cans shall not be <laughs> shall not <laughs> shall not be strapped to the front of said car at any time ever. May that never be a good idea. Yet yeah, here we are. Shh. This identifies it as a hood. Yeah, that's our hood. It's gonna work nice. And Hillbilly's building the radiator hose, and I've already got the top hooked up. And we got fuel. We even have a new fuel filter, but we're not putting it on tonight because we like to live dangerously. Tommy, come say hi. You got, you got the fans watching. Oh yes, buddy. Oh there you go. Leaning. My car's leaning There's a lot. There's being in there leaning. <laughs> it really is leaning so hard. <laughs> That's so much room for activity. We need a fuel pump. We're getting fuel. Ooh. <laughs> I knew it was gonna work. I knew we didn't need a fuel pump. We need a fuel pump. So running, we should license an insurance and every day one of us drives that home and back to work every day. I'll take my kids to school on this. <laughs> this is so awesome. Exciting. All right, here's the deal. We achieved our goal. She runs, she screams, she leans super hard to the driver's side. Look at the seat. It leans further than the car does. Here, let's get her back. Oh yeah, now it's just leaning, just full-time lean. We're gonna wait till morning, put an electric fuel pump in line to our new gas tank, then we'll be able to drive her. With how fast it's draining gas, we might wanna go to a bigger gas tank. So some of you might wonder what we're gonna do with this. And I feel like the sky is the limit. <laughs> okay. I want to make Demery's poor life choices better. So I feel like this should be painted. This should have a couple hair dryers right here. You know, some turbos, an LS, and some big sweet burnout tires at the back. But anyway, I'm super pleased with, with what we've accomplished. So it is tomorrow. It's the next day. All right, so Hillbilly got the carburetor torn down cleaned up, rebuilt, put back on, and it's not really running that great. So we ordered a fuel pump. Um, we are just gonna change the mechanical, but we're trying to see if we can get this thing to run without it. But I'm gonna change this fuel filter. I'll get this tightened up and we'll do some cranky crank. So I'm gonna give it a little shot of starting fluid. Try to get the fuel pump pulling fuel. We're gonna move the distributor around a little bit, but it sounds like it's almost about to start. We're going to try to start it, get it to idle, get the coolant filled, and then we're going to try to time it. So we got the timing light all set up, we got gas in the tank, we got all the good stuff. All right, so we've got our timing light. This thing is high tech. So we've got it set to nine degrees, and I'm just going to adjust until... Now we put it on the center line, right? And that'll be correct? Down there you'll see marks. Yeah. Yeah, we're pumping fuel out of the fuel pump. So it's bad. Oh yeah, go. Let's hope it doesn't start on fire. This motor's such junk. <laughs> so if we seize it, it don't matter. <laughs> yeah, all we gotta do is drive it. <laughs> Run this by our gap. You know what's weird? That's like right in the middle. 
So I'm just gonna do it off a of fail. He's a ripper! So here's the issue we're up against. We got a one gallon tank up here. We got a fuel pump that's pumping most of it back into the tank. I got back. an idea. What? We have the fuel line, it'll take two seconds to go return back into there. <laughs> Start pumping the return back into it, Sal? Why not? Now we're gonna hook our return up. You ready to stab it on there? One, two, three. Look how far we've came though. Yeah. Yesterday, this thing didn't even have the potential of running. No. And now look. Yeah, you guys took over my project. We're just trying to help you. Took it right away. <laughs> took it. Just <laughs> trying to help you. <laughs> took it right away from her. We're just trying to do our part. Don't buy cool things. Yeah, don't buy cool things if you don't want us to help. It's fire in the hole! So we got our one gallon. Let's see if she researches. And then we got our choke choked. <laughs> This is so sick. We decided we don't need rear brakes. Yeah, not Rear brake. That's probably the brakes yeah. that are working. Yeah, I know no, that no. we're working. You're skinny. So you're unattaching brakes? We're hillbilly line locking it. <laughs> Look at my speed out! <laughs> Saddle up for living on life support! <laughs> <laughs> I think we just lost the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, I got your wheel. You forgot something. <laughs> I take it for a real cruise. That one sucked. You sent her a little too hard. <laughs> sent her a little too hard there, bud. She's not up for that. Look, everything's fine. Yeah. I don't think the lug nuts are even tight. Because no studs are broke. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> we didn't even tighten our lug nuts. We got to make sure they're all tight. Not Always check your lug nuts. It helps. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to check your lug nuts, but it helps. Look at that. It did a smoky burnout. Oh, two of them. With a little bit of spice. <laughs> Oh, how lucky. Dog nuts. Only two. And a cat. Isn't there supposed to be five? Probably. That's a built-in ski. We're gonna be living on borrowed time. Like I already said, life support. So we're gonna put the lug studs on backwards. It's, uh, it's not the right wheel. Absolutely not. We're not going very far. Oh, that one no worky. So we got four here, but they're barely on. <laughs> barely is better than not on. Marketplace has struck again. This is a good marketplace find. Oh yeah. Sounds good. Oh yeah. We'll dismount that tire, put it on this wheel, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. So you guys might be wondering why we're working under a tarp outside. Well, today's move-in day for our new equipment. We're going to show you in a second. Oh, yeah. Well, we got two. So we're back to where we were. <laughs> and we got three. <laughs> That's not bad. Well, three it is. It was better than two. We're going to be living on a prayer again. We're in business. While Hillbilly's getting these tightened up, let's go check out the new equipment. All right, so we just got set up with the latest and greatest John Bean aligner for our Challenger 4 Post Lift. So we're going to be capable of doing four wheel alignments now in the shop. Super excited for that and Snap-on Equipment sent us the best of the best Hoffman wheel balancer and Hoffman tire machine. These things are going to be so sweet. That's why our stuff's outside. We're going to be moving all this in, getting it set up today. We'll show you guys more of that in another video. Cool. Well, let's get back to smoky burnouts. Round two. 
fight. Get in! This yeah, drive's kind of close. Dude, aside from being on the ground, this is great. <laughs> it's shifting. It's a wee little bit squirrely. <laughs> Woo! I do not think the pacer is safe to drive, but they're driving it anyway. It's like swaying back and forth on the road. Settle up, kids. Maybe I should drive. Not yet. You need real brake. <laughs> Not line lock brakes. I can't see over the steering wheel. I feel like a child. <laughs> you look like a child. I feel like with a little bit more love. Oh, dude. She's roadworthy. <laughs> oh! Oh, <laughs> 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 Is that tire flat now? I don't know. I don't She's care. She's not equipped for potholes. Yeah, we're not equipped for potholes. <laughs> it doesn't sound like we did. Freaking wrong. <laughs> Well, we need some new 14 inch tires. Sweetie, good job. You did amazing. I didn't even get to drive it. Next goal, make it to where she can drive it safely. All right, so this was the most amazing decision Demery's ever made, aside from marrying me. So good job. <laughs> and as always, we appreciate you. Oh, actually, we feel like there's a lot of fun to be had with it. So what would you guys like to see? We vote LS twin turbo, make it fun, rowdy smoky burnouts, let us know in the comments. And as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.